Okay, I apologize. We're having some trouble with the signal from Canada. But luckily for us, we have an exoplanet expert right here, just in case that happened. So this is Nicole Colon, and she's uh, an exoplanet scientist at NASA. And we're going to talk about this amazing new result from a very hot planet, I understand, about a thousand light years away. That's right. The exoplanet is named WASP-96b, and it is this hot, gaseous, giant, puffy planet that it is about a thousand light years away. So that's why today's release is so exciting, that's because right. it teases out what that is going to do for such a distance. Absolutely. So talk us through what this discovery is and, and why this is so significant. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, reveal that you're going to see is going to show the first spectrum of an exoplanet as taken from the Webb telescope. And this is ex exciting because it covers infrared wavelengths of light that we have not had access to before. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to use other telescopes to explore exoplanet atmospheres in the infrared, but not to this level of detail. And this is just one sliver of data that Webb is providing us using the nearest instrument specifically. And there's something about um, infrared that is actually particularly good for, for the spectrum. So in this, in this case, what we're doing is we're actually going to take the light and break it up into a rainbow and look very, very carefully at how much color is coming in, in, each, in, in each part of the, the spectrum. So I believe we have that image, if we can put that up. Okay, yes, I, I believe we're revealing the spectrum right here. <laughs> so we now have our spectrum, and this is exactly what you're seeing. As you just described with spectroscopy, what we did was we observed a transit of an exoplanet we observed the planet as it passed in front of the star. Now, mind you, this is not a direct image. This is an indirect image. So we've seen the effect of what happens when the planet and its atmosphere passes in front of the star. The starlight filters through the atmosphere. And then you can break that down into wavelengths of light. And you get a bunch of what looks like bumps and wiggles to some people, but it's actually full of information content. So you're actually seeing bumps and wiggles that indicate the presence of water vapor in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. It. So we have the spectrum up here. Is there anything mm -hmm. you'd like to, to highlight particularly? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, several features marked here. So I call them features. They are these, what I just referred to as bumps and wiggles. But what you're seeing here is a telltale <laughs> signature, the chemical fingerprint of water vapor in these atmospheres, in the, in the atmosphere of this specific exoplanet. And the other thing we can tell actually is that there's evidence of clouds and hazes because the water features are not quite as large as we predicted. So we can take that and infer that there are presence of clouds and hazes. Right. Now, one thing that we really want to make sure people understand is with this particular planet, this is a hot world. It's actually closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. Mm -hmm. And so we're not looking at liquid water here. But we're, we're looking mm -hmm. instead at, at, at sort of steam, water vapor. Yes, this is a, an exoplanet. It's a, about the size of Jupiter, about half the mass of Jupiter. It orbits around a sun-like star, but it does it every about three and a half days. Right. So it's extremely <laughs> hot, extremely close in, nothing like our solar system planets. But that's okay, because what we're seeing is, again, the first exoplanet data from Webb, and this is just the beginning. We're going to start pushing down to further smaller planets and being able to take measurements just like this with the nearest instrument that um, was built by the Canadian Space Agency, but also there's other three, three other science instruments that will add to our knowledge in the infrared as well as direct imaging uh, modes along with the transit method. So there's a lot more to come. And I guess one thing we should mention is not only are we going to be looking at planets that are more like the Earth in the future, but we'll also be looking at planets in our own solar system. Absolutely, yes. We're going to have um, exciting data from planets in our solar system from Mars uh, outward as well as asteroids and comets. So stay tuned for a lot more to come. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for telling us about the spectrum and I'll, I'll be seeing you later on today. <laughs> So we have three more big image reveals, and with that new and more exciting science, 